I've done a fair bit in Project Zomboid, from surviving a pretty normal life in Raven Creek to surviving trapped in the mall in Louisville. If you want to see those videos, they'll be in the description. But something I've always wondered after watching Walking Dead when I was younger, can we make our base in the Rosewood prison? And can we make it to 100 days? Well, with our boy Rick Rhymes and a huge assortment of mods, let's see. With the starting occupation of police officer, obviously, and with the traits slow worker, deprived, anemic, slow reader, dexterous, lead foot, brave, lucky, and scrounger, I think Rick Rhymes is ready. And yes, you heard that right, Rick Rhymes, not Grimes. And to start off, we're spawning in Rosewood because of his neighboring prison, otherwise you wouldn't have a video. And of course, as a police officer, we spawn in the police station. Okay, I've spawned in to the people I work with eating something. I've got a letter opener. I've got two letter openers. Wish me luck, boys. <laughs> After my first messy encounter with the undead, it's about time to get Rick some clothes. And the perfect time to show off the first big mob we have. Tetris Inventory. It makes the inventory system something more like Tarkov. But after securing some clothes and taking out the last zombie, we get a key to the place which gives us instant access to the armory next door. By holding off the temptation to go full gung-ho, we go take a look at the lockers first. Finding a few melee weapons, a holster, a sling, a fitting police helmet, a belt, and this crazy looking tactical vest. And of course, the favorite, the fanny pack. And now looking a little bit more kitted out, we decide to have a little look outside. And of course, the first body I find has a shotgun. So like the game just wants me to go crazy. Now time to see if there's any cars to help me get out to the prison. Which there is, but there is some friends there too. So I try my best to sneak around the cars, even found a key. But of course, we caught the Zed's attention. But about time we tested ourselves. Let's see how this goes. And we weren't doing too bad until... That's it, boys. Yeah, maybe not my smartest move. But we did seem to get off quite lightly. The zombies outside the fence didn't seem bothered, so we cleared out the rest in a quiet way. And got back to the carts, siphoned a little fuel, and left in our police cruiser. And set our sights on the prison. Took a little stop just to loot an ambulance on the way and sharpen our skills, killing a few more zombies. Time to make our way to the prison. And as we arrive, we need to start thinking of how we're going to clear this place and make sure we don't crash that much. Oh my god. But for now, with us getting low on food and water, maybe not the best bet to go for it yet. But after heading away from the prison, pointlessly driving, looking for somewhere to hunker down, we have an idea. Could we use the sirens on one of the police cars at the station to lure all the zombies into one place? Making our area a little bit safer. Only one way to find out. Now that's done, only thing left to do is to hunker down. So I pull up on the outskirts, take out the zombies following me. Wage the car up against another vehicle and try to get some sleep. Waking up on day two, time to see how our little siren plan went. And not very well. I think this better FPS mod might have messed up some of the zombie tracking. We changed some of the settings, but we carry on. And with Rick's food and water situation getting worse, we have to risk trying to go in the courthouse. That's so lucky I didn't mean to jump straight through. Luckily finding a sink to drink from. And a little staff room for a little bite to eat. And after taking out our only follower, we still need a little bit of food. So straight down to the local shop, see what they have. And after taking out the Zeds outside, we find out the bakery's locked. And after just passing a horde out back, no chance of breaking a window. So we opt for the office next door, and we're in luck. Plenty of food to last us for now. With the food situation sorted, time to start thinking about how to get into the prison. And let's be honest, we're not getting in without any guns. So back to the police station. But I've got to clear it out first. We might be able to wipe these. Ooh. 
Now just to lure the last few out. And straight to the arm. Where we find a few useful items. But mainly... Shotgun shells. Which we're definitely going to need. And with our new stockpile of ammo, we head back to the car for our final push to the prison. But on arrival, we're still not really sure how we're going to deal with this many Zeds. Until... I've got a plan, boys. I have got a plan. So, for some reason I thought my siren idea earlier was a good idea. So why not try it again? And almost got myself killed in the process. I managed to lose the horde in the woods and make my way to the entrance. I begin to lure a few zombies out at a time, hoping to pick some of them off and enter safely. And this just keeps going for hours. And Rick's getting tired. And at this point, it's a chore just to kill one zombie. With the Zeds increasing in number, I only see one way of survival. Shoot my way in. But with the main entrance looking like a bust, we try to sneak around the back, where the zombie population isn't any better. I feel like the zombies are breaking out of somewhere. Holy shit. Um, oh no, what have I done? Well, I just realized I can jump on roofs, can't I? So this might be the best time to mention another set of mods we have on. And that's Jump, Roll, Climb and Crawl. These mods give you a little bit more movement in the game and allow Rick to escape the yard and jump onto the roof. And after taking out the few zombies on the roof, needs to find a way to rest, so we try to sneak to the furthest point of the roof and get some sleep on the floor. Risky, I know, but if we don't rest there's no way we're going to get inside. And after only an hour of sleep, things aren't looking good. Until my dumb dumb brain remembers I can still jump on the roof above us, which can't even be accessed by the Zeds. And finally here we manage to sleep till the afternoon, but still no improvement on the tiredness. Whilst we wait for the game to allow us to try to sleep again, Rick spots something. The fact you're not subscribed yet, what are you doing? But also, a survivor. Survivor Graham and he's bad. Part of the Superb Survivors mod. I mean, the AI is not great, but adds a little bit more life into the game. And another survivor too. At least it gives us some hopes that maybe one day we can make a community here. With the tiders not getting any better, we decide to jump down, try to out the zombies that come up to the roof. And this time, not too many. We can do it quiet. And finally, we can sleep again. And this time, we wake up at three in the morning and straight into day four. And even though it's dark, we can't waste too much time. The longer we stay up here, the less food we're gonna have. So time to hop back down, see if we can clear this place. And at first, we keep it quiet. Rick's tiredness starts to catch up. So, back to the old trusty shotgun. And we start to see how many zombies we're actually dealing with. And 
after almost a whole day of fighting off waves of zombies, Rick's getting tired, so we better get some more sleep. And again, waking up in the early hours of the morning, at the beginning of day five. And straight back to it. Find as many zombies as we can with a melee, but in the end still getting tired. And having to resort back to the, the normal method. Have a little nap to regain our energy, then straight back to it. With the roof semi clear, we see an option to fit out the horde a little bit. And after a whole evening fighting off hordes of zombies, we finally did it. We got inside the prison. Not for long, but it's progress. And after our small success, time to sleep. And on day six, Rick wakes up drenched in a storm. Even more reason to get inside. Taking out the few zombies by the entrance, We're in. Now cautiously sneaking through the halls, taking our zeds as we go. We make it to the first cell block, but we need to go cell to cell and clear this place. And after clearing half the top floor, we've gathered a little bit of attention. And Rick's getting tired, but we have to risk sleeping out in the rain again. Oh, I promise this is the last time. And waking up on day seven, Rick's really drenched. And we can't risk getting sick, so we rush inside. And by some miracle, the cell block's empty. I don't know if our noise cleared them out, but I'm not complaining. But now, time to see what we got here. Looting all the cells, and claiming the far one for ourselves. Finding some food, and starting to move some furniture to block off the walkways. And as we're about to go search more of the prison, we get a surprise. Jesus Christ. A survivor, Audrey. So, I guess our first recruit. Just have to patch her up from some injuries, and we go back to exploring where we find a security room with a single rifle and continue back to our room to organize our supplies, where we've moved more storage into the room so everything's in one place. Then the tedious job of setting up our base for our survivor group then decided to get in a little bit of exercise. And Rick can finally get some sleep in his bed after three long nights sleeping on the roof. But as we wake up on day eight, we have a new problem. The bodies in the prison block are making Rick sick. And if it carries on, it'll kill us in no time. But we set up a corpse dumping area so Audrey can start clearing out the bodies. But while she does that, we take a further look around, finding a huge locker room with lots of ammo and useful items, and we take it all back to base. And with the day coming to an end, we go to sleep and let Audrey carry on cleaning up. And on day nine, we're sick again. We're either underestimating how many bodies there are, or Audrey's slacking. But after stuffing ourselves with food, we're back out exploring the prison, where we find our way to the holy room, the armory, stocked with so much ammo and a striker shotgun. And taking it all back to base, we find Audrey taking damage again. After patching her up, we realize she's been walking around on the broken glass with bare feet. So we give her some shoes and hope she'll start clearing the bodies now. And it's starting to get late, but with the prison so exciting to explore, we go out for one last run and find the kitchens with a dead survivor. Must have been one of the ones we saw earlier. And finding a storage room with an assortment of supplies and a classroom with a few useful books, giving us the idea to search out a possible library so we can improve our skills. But first finding the laundry room and then finding a fully stocked library full of every book we need. Oh, the look at carpentry level one. There it is. So we take them all home, stock them all away. And after a late but very profitable night, we get some sleep, taking us into day 10. But we start the day of seeing how Audrey's doing. Taking out a few Zeds. They're going up onto the roof and beginning to read through some of the books we found. And as afternoon comes, we walk back to base. Who the hell are you? And someone else is there, Rise. And after a bit of convincing, he joins the group and we instantly change his name to Ryan. Not a lot else happens on day 10, so we get an early night. And wake up early on day 11. And finally, with the two survivors, the prison interior is starting to look clean. And with the lack of Zeds in the prison, it's starting to make me worried. So I take a look outside and right next to the cell block, we find an airdrop. So we loot the drop, finding mainly small electronics and some water and food. And after organizing all our new loot, 
we start thinking of the possibility of looting outside the prison. So we head out to the car park to check on the cars. And after checking for all the cars, we're in luck. We find a key to the ambulance on the floor and siphon a little bit of fuel out of the other cars. We take this chance to go and retrieve our old police car from a week ago. Tow it back in and get it as close to the cell block as we can. But on our journey, where all the zombies disappeared to becomes obvious, with a huge horde surrounding the fences. And as we park up inside the fences, somehow there's another supply drop. We must have been deaf whilst playing. And after staring at the hordes growing outside the fences, damn, time to start leveling. So we start taking apart anything we can in the cell block and sleep for the night starting day 12 and finishing the deconstruction of the cell block in the morning. And with the meager supplies out of the furniture so far, we start exploring around the prison, taking apart anything we can. Getting our carpentry skill up as we can. All right, carpentry's up. Nice. And after a long day of carpentry, we come back to base to find another survivor. But this one's dead. Ryan and Audrey must have taken out a raider whilst we're gone. And AI. there was still one left. And we weren't taking any chances. And with the day coming to an end, and not seeming to have as much build supplies as we wanted, we go to bed and thinking of how we can get more tomorrow. Waking on day 13, we make a plan. We empty what we can from the ambulance and we head to a warehouse local to us that might have the tools and supplies we need. And en route, we spot a construction site. So a quick detour. We quickly try to loot some of the buildings, take out some of the zombies quietly. And after the first building was empty, we take another look around But whilst killing some zombies, something doesn't feel right. Whoa! Um. Shit. Yeah, we must have found a big horde out here. There's a lot of zombies out here. Woo! So the first little trip to get some supplies didn't go too well. And we even lost our ambulance. But after a quick rest, time to take out some of the zombies following me a little more quietly. I'll try and get her. Whilst rummaging through some of the bodies, Rick decides to make a little change to his style. Looks familiar. And after taking out way more zombies than I wanted to, maybe it's time to get home. And we bump into a new survivor. Katarina. Katrina? Well, she joins us, and we just call her Kat. And after a little walking, we finally get home. Introducing Kat to the rest of the group, dumping off some of the supplies we found, and getting some sleep. And then into day 14, which is a little bit of a mess of a day. Spent the start organizing, bumping into a random survivor walking around the base, Dr. Wendy, and spending most of the day looting up the prison. With some of our new supplies, looking into making an improvised silencer. And as the hand torch one is the only one we can make, we craft it up. And after a day of really getting nothing done, we go to bed. And wake up on day 15, where we prep for the day ahead, attaching our new silencer to a pistol, and plan on walking over to the warehouses what we were aiming for the other day. But not even a little while into our walk, disaster strikes. Just casually clearing out a few zombies and laceration. Um, and whoever told me not to take anemic in the comments, you were right. But somehow running away through the woods, we patch Rick up. And as good a time as any to test out the silencer. And we continue our journey, walking across the farmland, doing some farm buildings on the way, until we arrive at the construction site where we lost the ambulance. And we see how many zombies we drew over with the shotgun. Maybe not a good idea to use that again. But we carry on, moving our way through the woods. But of course, the woods aren't as empty as we hoped. We start to gather a little bit of attention. When we finally get to an opening, we think it's best to try and clear the zombies following. But as we take out more and more Zeds, the silence is still loud enough to bring in more. With the pistol running dry and the darkness creeping in, we make 
a very stupid decision. I feel like this is an awful idea. And it's time to run. But it seems like I've lured almost all the zombies in the local area. There might not actually be that many zombies over here. Please. Please. And somehow, Rick being knackered, we made it away from the huge hordes. Just now to navigate the dark and get back to the prison. And we did think of hunkering down in the house, but... Yeah, no chance of that. And just as I'm thinking we're doing alright, we bump into a huge horde in the woods. I'll just let you watch. Please don't bump into a horde. Like that. Right, I'm just getting away from them. And after somehow surviving that, we get out of the woods and find the drive-in. With the sun coming up and the fog rolling in, we take the chance killing a few Zeds and trying to get a car. But of course, no luck there. But we aren't that far from the prison, so we start making our way back. At least we can see now. But with the rest of the journey being more or less chill, we finally get home and Rick goes straight to sleep. And waking up on day 17, after missing the whole of day 16, we start our day very early, sorting out the base, and finally getting Rick to clean himself. Damn, he must stick. And we do a little bit of a perimeter check, taking out some of the shambling intruders. And we decide to go and get Audrey, who for some reason has just stood out in the middle of the yard. But we get Audrey to follow us for our next run, which we decided to try and get back to the town. And after finding out the police cruiser has no fuel, we have to go on foot. But killing a few Zeds in the way, we finally arrive at the police station, which we know has an abundance of cars. But first, time to put Audrey to the test. And of course, as soon as the action starts, she runs. And after the fight's over, of course she reappears. We take a little peek into the station, and of course we get a little bit more attention there too. And with Rick already being tired from his early wake up, it's a little bit of a hard fight. Finally, Audrey showing up to kill the last set. She's really not that useful, but after luring the last of the zombies out the station, decide to get some sleep in the office, as Rick's not doing so good after his all-nighter. And wake up early on day 18. And decide, why not take a peek at the fire station across the road, a future spot we want to loot. But we definitely aren't getting there today. That's where we end up by Kenneth here. But we do sneak around to the police car park, and begin checking through some of the cars and taking out a few of the Zeds that are being dragged over by the noise. But we do get lucky, a police truck that has a key in it already and some fuel as well. And also a few goodies in the boot. But we do gain a little bit more attention, but make a light work. And with all the Zeds around the station dealt with, we loot up the rest of the cars and dump all the loot in the truck. Before we go, we just have to take a quick look in the station, just in case there's anything else to look. And of course, while fighting the dead, Audrey tries to run away again. But this time, she gets quiet. And Audrey's gone. And just as I think it can't get any worse, we bump into a hostile survivor. But he does have a fire axe, which we are going to need for later. So, we do what has to be done. But before we can even loot the axe, a blast from the shotgun have brought all the Zeds out of the woodwork. And we have to make a dash to the car and a close getaway. But the hold that was chasing Kenneth earlier blocked my path. So we had to dump our new car and have to make a lasting ditch effort over the fence. Gee. Oh my god. And ended up running all the way back to base with no Audrey and no loot to show for it. Rick goes straight to bed again after four days of phases. When waking up early on day 19, Rick wanders the prison for the early hours, taking out a few zombies. And feel like he needs to try again. So as soon as the sun's up, he equips the tactical axe and leaves the shotgun at home. 
then heads out. And with some luck, we find a zombified Patrick Bateman with a very useful fire axe. And with his goal to find another car, he heads to the car park next to the courthouse, clearing all the zombies in the area with the axe. <laughs> And the trust of silence pistol. But with none of the cars being usable, we head further into town, aiming for the housing area in the middle, and hop in the fence and check in the car outside of this house. But no luck. And again, we're just getting tired, so we decide to hunker down in the house for the night. And finally, make it to day 20 and wake it up at a more reasonable time. But with the house seeming like a bus for finding a car, we make a run to get out of there and bumping into a familiar face. Kenneth, the bastard that led the horde away from the fire station. I mean, I would kill him, but I'm not risking luring another horde to me. So we move on, planning on running home, until we have an idea. And don't worry, this idea shouldn't be as dodgy as the last few. We're looking for cars, when really all we need is fuel. So we could just venture across town to the fuel station, fill up a few cans, and we'd be all set. So we get going, but as we make our way further through the town, the number of Zeds is crazy. But we dodge our way through, and make it to the gas station now to loop through the woods and get rid of the Zeds following and run back over to the station and clear out the rest. And finally, we've done it. One of our plans didn't go to hell. We fill up two gas cans and even get a van running. Now just for the treacherous ride home, which somehow we make it through. And we arrive safely back at base. Do see a hostile survivor outside, but we ignore him for now. Until he just walks into the base. And... But then, time to get a good night's sleep. After finally a successful day. And waking up on day 21. Feeling good after a good day. And pretty proud of our almost 2,000 kills. And we start our day doing a little organising. Building two shells in the cell over for some ammo and clearing up a lot of the mess we've made by just dumping a lot of the stuff on the floor and setting out in our new van to gather some wood from the abundant trees around us. And of course, the little zombie killing. And after chopping down a few trees and bundling them with sheet rope, we get back to base and begin the long journey of leveling our carpentry skill by sawing the logs into planks. And with our meagre progress, we realize we haven't even read the carpentry 2 book. So a quick trip to the prison library to fetch almost all the carpentry books we'll ever need. Then a late night reading session followed by some sleep, leading us into day 22. We wake up a little late, we switch our focus back to trying to explore that horrible warehouse. The one that's almost got us killed a few times already. But this time, we plan on driving the long way round, down the motorway and up to the warehouse. So we head out in the new van, passing through the very crowded roads outside Rosewood, with a few close calls. Right, this ain't good. We finally get into the motorway, and at first, it seems fine, until we meet the horde. Oh my god, what are these hordes? And after trying to manoeuvre our way down the motorway, we get surrounded. And just as we think escape's impossible, we find a chance. Okay, panic over. And once again, we lose the vehicle. And making a very familiar trip back through the woods. With the night approaching, we try to take shelter in one of the houses we saw a few days ago. And luckily with a scrap machete found in the first zombie we meet, we clear the area and have a rough night's sleep in the garage. And waking on day 23, we clear out some of the zombies around the house. until we get interrupted by a police helicopter and all the hordes from the local area are drawn our way. No good time, helicopter. With the hordes converging on us, we have no choice but to run and abandon our mission to get to the warehouse again. And besides a few close calls on the run back, we get closer to the prison. 
I decided to try and quickly sneak into Rosewood and retrieve our abandoned police truck from the day before. And with only a little Zed killing, we get it pretty easy. And a quick drive home, and straight to the cell to sleep for the night. I'm waking on day 24 with our constant failures caused by the huge hordes. Rick's anger caused him to plot a dangerous plan. First, we're going to need a few bottles and some of the nice gasoline we recently acquired. And we're going to take our police cruiser for a little spin into town. And when we finally get there, time to try an old tactic. And when the hordes have gathered, we're going to do what all great Zomboid players do. Start a fire. Did he throw it? He did. And after killing the few Zeds following, we can sit and watch. Well, until a few zombies make it through the courthouse, so time to kite them around for a bit. When enough is set on fire, we lose them through the trees and kill the few Zeds that follow. And get this huge mace from one of them. Not bad. Then we return home on foot to allow the burning to continue and get a well earned rest, taking us into day 25. Where we begin the day by putting our new mace to work, which luckily for us can also be used as a sledgehammer. And we begin to knock down the walls to the adjacent cells to make a bigger room. Time to get back to it and begin to drive to town. The nurse a few zombies have made their way into the yard. So after quickly dealing with them, we're on our way. We park up on the outskirts of town and walk our way in. But we notice the courthouse is fully up in flames. So we use this to continue the perch, gathering as many zombies to me using the pistol and kite them around to set them all on light. And after a while of doing this, they disappear. Okay, my game might have crashed. And for some reason, all the Zeds are gone. Maybe they've gone to subscribe. And maybe you should too. And with my frustration of my kills being stolen from me, we head to the fire station to begin the sirens again. And after looping the station, discovering the hordes hidden in the area. Oh my God, there's a lot there. We set them alight. Come on, pop, pop, pop. And drag them back to the car. And we rinse and repeat, gathering all the zombies we can find, setting them all ablaze. And hopefully not the whole town with it. But with enough of them burning, we skulk away back to our car and sit and watch as our kill total rapidly rises. And as the night falls, we drive back to base and realize the crash from earlier and delete all our survivors too. So we end day 25 all alone in our cell block. And waking on day 26, we head straight back into town to see the carnage the flames have left. And on arrival, there's still a fair few zombies around. So time to clean up the rest of melee. the zombie population definitely dented, we finally take the opportunity to try loot the fire station. Okay, so far so good. We find some more axes. Axes, there we go. A couple chainsaws, a gas mask, and most of all, a big propane tank and a fuel tank. We take the chance to get the truck outside running and take it all back to base. And with the trusty mace, we decide to make our first big change to the base, breaking down one of the walls to the outside and the fence to make an entrance for the car. And then we make the entrance a little bit bigger, making almost a garage. 
and as it's getting too dark to work, we go get some sleep and wake up on day 27. And we begin the day by sorting around the base, making a few spears as the garden fork served us well the day before, and we decide to head out. With the aim to collect our police truck we left the day before, we take a little detour on the way to loot some of the farm buildings on the outskirts of town and instantly find something very useful, a generator. And for some reason, I completely missed mentioning the power in the water shut off a few days ago. And in the barn down the road, we take a huge fuel barrel and mark down on the map so we can pick it all up later. And make our way across the fields, back to town to grab the car and take the moment to get a little bit of practice with the spear. When we finally get to the car, we take a chance to have a look at the Zeb population in the town after our little fire perch. And of course, the population is still booming. So we try stopping in the fence community in town and try to clear out the area a little, allowing us to loot this in the future. And after hours of luring them over, we haven't made a dent. And with Rick getting sleepy, time to call it quits. But still a little bit of time to go grab the fuel and the generator from earlier. And getting home and reversing into our new garage, time for bed and a late wake up on day 28. With the success of looting the farm buildings the day before, we decided to do a proper loot run through the farmlands, as we haven't had much luck looting anywhere else due to the crazy population problem. First, we try to make a base of operations, so we clear the first house we find, looting everything inside and clearing the area of zombies. From here, we go loot the garage out back finding another fuel barrel and throwing that straight in the truck. Then sneak past groups of zombies and loot another house down the road. And as darkness falls, we head back to the house and go to sleep for the night and wake up early on day 29, where we head out further down the road to some more houses, finding more fuel barrels, where we painstakingly combine both barrels together, then head down to the fuel station next to the drive-in we saw whilst running for our lives the other week. And after clearing the local Zeds and getting whatever we could from the buildings nearby, we head over to the fuel station where we loot the entirety of the food, and more importantly, all the snacks Rick can carry. And finally, after a pretty successful two day loot run, we return to the prison with a huge supply of fuel and food and snacks for the future. But continuing on day 29, we spent the end of the day finally realizing we could dismantle the whole county. And damn, this leveled our carpentry fast. It also gave us a good supply of planks and nails and a quick trip to the kitchen storage to collect a wooden crate which we place down back at base then tear down some more furniture that we don't really need and as it's getting pretty late we get Rick some sleep and wake up on day 30 and begin the day looking at what we can build with the more builds mod until we get interrupted by a hostile survivor trying to get into our base and after an awkward run around we have to put them down and have a little check around just to make sure there isn't any more and when the coast is clear, we think it's best to build a door. So next time we'll hear them coming. And with base improvements on the mind, we go and grab a water dispenser from the other room and place it in the cell block. Then decide to organize the base a little, starting with all the food we got from the loot run the other day. And started planning out the base structure, knocking down some more walls so we can build a few loot rooms. And of course, some zombies have to be the loudest thing ever. So after wiping them out, it's getting late. So we go to read the next volume of the carpentry skill book and get some sleep. Heading into day 31, we start by heading over to the kitchens, try and grab some more crates, to place them back in our new loot room. We're starting the long process of organizing all the rubbish we've got around the place. Continue with the food, starting stockpiling guns, and of course, more bloody zombies at the windows. And after violently taking them out, we have to stop this from happening. We grab a local filing cabinet and block off some of the main doors to hopefully stop them wandering in more. And as we're already here, we decide to spend the rest of the day breaking down most of the furniture around the entrance area and grab some more filing cabinets and block the doors and barricade the windows. And going back to base, having a little bite to eat and getting some sleep. I'm waking up on day 32, feeling a little safer, continuing where we got interrupted yesterday. And then noticing we have a visitor. Hey, Survivor Nicholas. And well, as it's a little lowly around here, we decided to ask him to join us, and he accepts. Yay, Nicholas. And with Nick now on guard duty, we 
can continue our organizing. And after a couple hours of organizing, we decide to continue our carpentry leveling and our plank collection. But on return to the base, we see another survivor. Matthew and Nicholas nowhere to be seen. We pull out our gun to investigate, and as I arrive, Matthew's being chased by another survivor. Whoa. And before I can even react, it seems like Nick's got this handle. Whoa! Damn, Nick. And with that, we let Matt join us too. And as we're right next to another water dispenser, we grab that wasp we hear. Spend the rest of the night taking apart some furniture around the base. and we take a good night's sleep, taking us into day 33. But we decide, after a few days safely at home at base, we're going to head out, aiming for some sort of industrial loot. So we're going to Rosewood, maybe looting garages or the mechanic workshop, if we can even get there. So starting by unloading the car, on the floor again, and heading out, stopping at the gated community from a few days ago. And after seeing the amount of Zeds, we think maybe not the best plan, but still we had to kill a few of them that we had led over. we try and get around the gated community, and instantly bad idea too. So we double back, and we aim for the workshop. But after a little risky driving, the workshop doesn't look that bad. And obviously, we have to kill a few that we brought over in the car. But nothing Rick can't handle. And finally, we get to loot the workshop, finding a few goodies, but in the last cabinet, we find the Holy Grail, the propane torch. The last place I checked, wow. But even with a propane torch, the loot from the workshop wasn't that great. So we decided to try and head out of Rosewood, down the highway, to a potential warehouse. But it didn't take that long to realize the main roads wasn't going to be possible. We didn't want another incident like the van from a couple weeks ago. So we quickly turn around, and luckily we got out of there. We decided to drive home with the reward of the propane torch being enough. And instantly, we try and put our new metal working tools to use, picking up our welding mask and crafting a metal pipe with the goal to make a metal pipe silencer. But of course, our skill wasn't high enough, so we travel back to the kitchens to do some leveling, taking apart anything we can find. Hey. And doing the same in the laundry room, until it's too dark, so we head back to base and get a good night's sleep. And waking up on day 34, we can finally make the metal pipe silencer. Then taking the rest of the morning, running over to the prison armory to grab any supplies we didn't grab initially. And bringing them back to base, then we finally try and put our new silencer on one of our guns. And of course, our luck, it doesn't fit on any of them. If anyone knows why, please let me know. And after a lot of annoying fiddling, we managed to get the original silencer we've had all along on one of the pistols. So that'll do. And to be honest, it's probably better than the metal pipe one. And now we've finally got a silenced gun, we had to check while creepy zombies are making noise through the walls this whole time. And again, a few zombies have made it through the front entrance. But, good to test out our silencer. And after the front seemed clear, it seems time to head back to base for some sleep. Waking up super early on day 35, we start the day by just waiting around the base. But remember, with the propane torch, we can secure the front of the prison better. So we grab a few metal sheets, and again, when we get there, more Zeds. So time for another cleanup. And we wired up two of the broken windows, but there's more zombies in the side room. We take them out too. And with the sun finally coming up, we plan to head out to Rosewood again. And give another shot of getting into the gated community. And on arrival, the population looks like it's spread it out again. So we put the new pistol to work to see if we can thin out the hurdle. And it is working, but more and more keep coming. So we have to resort to melee. But not long until there seems to be too many to hand. So we give him the slip and run through the woods. We let Rick catch his breath. And when he's ready, we take another crack at him. Going back in with melee and taking out a horde next to the burnt down courthouse. And after so much work, and only having two splitting acts to show for it, we decide to call it quits for now. 
and head back to base. Think about a plan on how to clear out the town. And if you see a survivor outside the prison fighting off some zombies, we'll leave them for now. And when back at base, we take our frustrations out on our old pickup truck. We try and train a little mechanic skill whilst we're at it, but realise we're missing a lug wrench, so we can't do that much anyways. Then, funny enough, the survivor from outside makes it in. And as she seems cool, we decide to let her join too. And we spend the rest of the evening prepping up for the day ahead, and finally time to get some sleep, waking up a little later on day 36. With the obvious plan to go back into Rosewood and set it ablaze, we set off. Until we realise it's raining, and not being 100% sure if this messes everything up, we decide to postpone the idea for today. But we decide to put the rain to use by building some rain collectors. So we gather the supplies and go to jump onto the roof. And after a few too many attempts and a little sit down, we finally go. There we go, we're on the roof. Build a rain collector above our cell so we can plumb it in afterwards. Then a little grace will jump off the roof. Right, yeah, that hurt. And go to grab a shower from the prison showers. We place it in our cell. And of course, I can't plumb it in. So we end up breaking that one. I'm going to grab a sink instead. And that doesn't work either. Just as I think about abandoning this, I realise something. I put the shower and the sink in the wrong place. Okay, let's not talk about it. But for the rest of the day, just to pass the time, we go on a carpentry level this morning, disassembling everything we can find. Until I literally can't see, so we stumble back to base in the dark and get some sleep. Waking up on day 37 and decide to build ourselves a bin so we can get rid of some of this rubbish we got around. We spend a little bit of time collecting all our rubbish up and destroying it and then continuing yesterday's levelling spree, going from cell to cell, clearing out the rubbish and dismantling everything. Then we get bored, so continue out into the prison and grab this little weapon locker whilst we're here. Until some Zeds finally grace us with some action. Then a little dismantling mixed with some Zed killing and eventually back to the base for a wash in our new sink and straight to bed. I'm waking up on day 38 to a little ruckus. Some more raiders are breaking in and fighting our group. We swiftly put down one of them and luckily the new group member Heather had taken out the other. Then another appears out of nowhere, so we take her out too. And we decide to get some more carpentry work done, so we disassemble the whole library, and we go on another rampage, walking around the prison, just destroying anything we can. And again, working really late into the night, I can't even see what I'm doing. Oh, that's better. Then back to base for a very late night, taking us into day 39, where with our new carpentry skill, we built these nice military cranes so we can further organize our base. And then it begins, the long day of organizing, where we scour through all our loot we've collected, where we build more crates for weapons and crafting, and a little one for medical. And after a very long, tedious day, we get to go to bed and wake up on day 40 and start again, but upstairs this time. And after a couple hours, the base is fully organized, with a couple final touches. And with that done, we go to the prison entrance to see what work can be done there. And what would you know, a hostile survivor. Oh, maniac. And some Zeds. Thank God a little excitement after a few quiet days. Just what Rick needs. We're back to base. And as we've been building up our base, we can't stop there. We begin putting down some new flooring, collecting some wood in between from all the stuff we've destroyed. And with the floor coming along, we start to get an early night. And waking up very early on day 41. But we spend the start of the day literally doing nothing until it's light enough. Then we went to grab some more wood and finish off the garage floor. And then spend the rest of the day in bed reading and getting some sleep. And waking up on day 42, where we are very bored of staying at home. So with the rain still coming down, we can't go with burning down the roads we plan, but we can try another plan. But we failed multiple times. The warehouse run. And I know, I'm an idiot for trying it again, but I can't help myself. So, we try the long way round again. Same way as we lost the van. And this time, even with the massive hordes, we make it through. We wave our little van as we go by. And when we're close, we park up. And make our way on foot to the warehouses. Clearing this little military camp area. And finally, we've made it to the warehouses. We take out the Zeds outside. And make our way in. Loot in the first box, and it's all food. Of course it is. And to double check, we look in the other warehouse too. They're all the same. What makes it even worse is they're all rotten too. With the unbelievable disappointment I felt, we head home. But of course, the road we came down is swarming with zombies. So we try to take the scenic route back across the fields. 
but we couldn't have guessed with how many zombies are waiting for us. Right, we've done the car here. So, things don't look too good right now, but the plan's simple. Juke the Zeds, loop back to the car. Then we can get out of... Oh my god. Okay, maybe not. New plan. Run. And with it getting darker, we need to find a spot to hunker down. So we head to the highway, as I'm pretty sure there's some farm buildings nearby. Just need to clear the few following me, and as we aren't looking too fresh, we use the pistol. And they aren't stopping. So we make a beeline for the house, just to find that's overrun too. Now our only hope is to head for the woods, on the other side of the road. But this time's a close call. When we're finally in the woods, we eventually lose them. And in no time, we arrive at a familiar road, taking out the few zeds in the area, and venturing down to the drive. We seem to go by every time we fail. But this time, we decide to go in. There must be a structure or something where we can stay for the night. And on arrival, we toss them with a few zeds and decide to hop the fence, as the other side seems quiet. And luckily, no zombies down this end. And an unlocked car. So we decide to hop in and sleep for the night, taking us into day 43. We decide to try and check the other cars for some fuel and to see if there's any keys. And luckily straight away we find some keys on the floor. And the car has fuel too. But as we just lost our nice police truck, we have to see what else we can get. And a little chance to get some payback. Okay, that's better. Now to the car. It's just what we're after. A new truck with the keys in the glove box. And luckily we found a jerry can in the car earlier. So we siphon some fuel and hitch up this little trailer and get out of it. And apart from a couple awkward driving moments, uh, this is why I wondered if this would be an issue. Oh no, we're through. We make it back to the prison in one piece. And finally, we're home. But it seems very quiet. Looks like the other survivors might have left. Maybe it's some out of Rick's away. Maybe they're worried about his mental state. But they're gone now, and Rick's all alone. So we get some sleep in the quiet base, and wake up early on day 44. And today's plan is going out and cutting down some more trees. As we found this chainsaw in one of the cars yesterday. Drive out to the front of the prison, and put the chainsaw to work. And it definitely cuts down trees, but it's also really noisy. So we do lure over some sets. And after four trees, the chainsaw's already out of fuel. So a quick trip back to grab an axe, as they never fail me, and bundling the wood and throwing it in the truck, and then return to base, where we saw up all the logs, and use the planks to put down some new flooring. And when it's getting late, we get some sleep, heading into day 45, starting the day checking out our kills and skills, then plan on heading out to Rosewood, trying to get to the bookstore. And I do head out, but I didn't record it, but you didn't miss much, we just got to the outside of the bookshop, and killed a lot of Zeds, but seemed never ending, so we came home. But when I did record, I decided the plans to level up our electrical skill so we could try and make some noisemakers and eventually learn how to hotwire a car. Then when it gets dark, we get some sleep and wake up on day 46. Starting off by continuing the electrical leveling, going upstairs and find any appliance we can. And when we're nearing the level up, we scour the prison for a few more items and take out a few Zeds whilst we're at it. And finally, one more flashlight, and we're level two. Yes. And just as we're emptying the items back at base, we hear a plane overhead. What is that noise? Might be an airdrop. There it is. We hurry to investigate, killing any zombies on the way. We take what we can and get away, as the noise is bound to bring the horde. And when we finally open all the boxes, we're given so many supplies. Some fishing gear, medical, jarred food, and the COVID essential toilet paper. Then, just because I'm a bit of a loot rat, we try to grab the last couple crates. Take out the Zeds around the airdrop. Taking all of it back to base. Just for it to be mainly toilet paper. Well, at least we aren't running out anytime soon. Then decide to get an early night and wake up early on day 47. Where we decide, maybe it's time to bring the shotgun back out of retirement. Could help us clear out the town. And we grab a lot of ammo too. 
as the main goal for today, get into Rosewood and get in the bookstore. See if we can find out how to use the generator work. So we head out after making a few Molotovs, and as we leave, we notice a lot of the Zeds have been dragged into the entrance. But we can't deal with them now, so we leave them for later. Then pull up in Rosewood, we decide maybe it's worth just setting the shops next to the courthouse alive. But as soon as we throw, another crash. Really? And of course, like before, the Zeds despawn. Annoying, I really wanted to burn down those shops. But taking advantage of the situation, we move towards the bookstore. And there's still a lot of Zeds in the area, but we avoid the big groups and just focus on the ones coming out of the shop. But then have an idea, we can still use the Molotovs we have. And funny enough, they work perfectly. And there's still some coming from the bookstore, so after a little melee, we're finally in, but no luck on the generator book. So thinking of where else we might get it, the only option is the school. I hope they have a library. So we pack away all our gear and start making our way, but instantly underestimate the number of Zeds downtown. And as always, I have to dump the car again, but not before we throw a Hail Mary Molotov. And again, time for a fight. Taking out as many as we can, with the help of our trusty pistol, just to notice midway that our holy molotov from earlier might have started an unholy fire. Shit, sorry religion. And with the time getting late, we try to clear out one of the houses, so we don't have to run all the way back to the prison. And funny enough, we end up staying in the house we stayed in a few weeks back. And getting some sleep, waking up early on day 48. Then, taking some sleeping pills just so we can wake up at a normal time. And just as we're leaving the house, another plane. Just to perfectly herd all the zombies from the rest of the town our way. And in a panic, we quickly decide instead of running, we're going to hop on top of the roof of the local gigamart. And we just chill on the roof, hoping that all the Zeds will just walk by. And they sort of were, until another jet goes overhead and brings them all back this way. And as we've already been up here for hours, we decide to hop down, see if we can fight our way out of the store. We have a little bit of shopping whilst we're here. But then, we have an idea. The population right now is all around the Gigamart and my car. So if we can make a few Molotovs, we can take out so many. So we make our way uptown to the bar near the gated community. And luckily, only a few Zeds to put down and we sneak past the rest. And we get enough alcohol to make two Molotovs. Sneak back to the store and straight onto the roof. And with a ton of zombies just outside, we throw the first Molotov. And it's falling super slowly. It literally takes almost an in-game hour for it to hit the floor. And when it did, the zombies have already moved. And the fire goes out instantly. But the noise did bring them all back in. So we throw the second molly and hope. And this one takes multiple hours to even hit the ground. And only caught one alight. But it doesn't take long for the rest of them to go up in flames. And we've been up all night, so we take a little nap. And we call this day 49. Which we fully spend just sat on top of the roof, eating and watching the dead. Eventually getting some more sleep, just to wake up on day 50 at 3 in the morning. So we patiently wait for the sun to rise, and we have to make our move. Jumping down from the roof, then jumping down again. Oh my god, no way we just made it off there. I have no idea why I did that. But we run, and the hordes in town have grown. But we see some swords sticking out of one of them, so quickly grab that. And now, time for some killing. And somehow we managed to get two more swords from it as well. Then make the long walk home, and a quick run through the hordes, and then back into the cells. Where we unload all our loot, pick off a few Zeds that have fallen. And decide it's about time to clear out the prison again. So we sort the rest of the logs we have, and start making some spears. Then time for an early night to prep for the onslaught tomorrow. I'm waking up on day 51, ready for war. And as soon as the sun rises, the Zeds come not. <laughs> Take them out and then head to the back of the prison to start finding our way around the edge. Going through loads of spears, and also noticing you can kill the Zeds for a fence with a spear. Proper Walking Dead style. And we continue the fight, taking out as many Zeds as we can.
until our final spear breaks. But luckily, we took a machete from this scary looking zombie earlier and make our way to the entrance, taking out as many as we can. Until the fatigue is catching up with us. So we head back to the prison box to rest, just to be greeted by some more at my door. So we flank them and take them out and go get some sleep after a long day of fighting. I'm waking up on day 52, ready to start fighting again, going through the prison to the entrance, killing as we go. Lock off any doors we can with filing cabinets, then eventually heading outside to fight the last of them. Finally, it's done. Our first major defense of the prison. Man, what a mess. But time for a rest after a few crazy days. Just next step, clear the town once and for all. And we're waking up on day 53. With not much of a plan, we go take a look at the entrance of the prison and at the carnage we left the other day. But the front's all clear and we head round the back from the side. And there's still a few hordes around the fence's edge, so we put our newfound fence attack to work, clearing some of them out. When our spears break, we head home. We spend a little time grabbing some of the planks lying around the prison and drop them down and make as many spears as possible. As we have a plan forming on how we're gonna go take Rosewood and clear it all out. And this plan also requires mechanic leveling too. So we head out to the car park out front to tow in some of the cars so we can tear them up for some XP. But with the realization we haven't read Lane's auto manual, we can't even do that much. Except from take the wheels on and off. So we go back to the car park and just do that. And finally, yes. Finally, we're level one. And as it's almost midnight, we head back and call it a night. And waking up on day 54, we decide we want to head back to town, trying to grab some of the books to help us. But on arrival, something snapped. The idea of looking for the books disappeared, right when we caught sight of all the hordes spreading across town again. So we spend the rest of the day clearing everywhere we can. Eventually, when the day's coming to an end, we take the trucks to the outskirts of town to try and sleep. And because of the Zeds out here, we end up running down to the police station and sleeping in the interrogation room instead. And waking on day 55, we sneak into the center of town again and quickly kill a small horde, and then loot the shop for some food for the day and take a look down to the bookshop we looted recently, which is now swarming with the undead. But the hair salon is empty, so we loot that up and take in all the hairspray. But I'm pretty sure some of this can be made into a bomb. Then sneak around to the back of the shops just to start a very long fight. <laughs> Eventually becoming too tired to fight, so we make a run back for the car. Have I got no shoes? Where's my shoes gone? Anyways, we hop on the car and drive back to the prison. Where we chill out for a little bit and get a good night's sleep, taking us into day 56. And prepped his head straight back out, as all the killing we're doing must be doing something. And pulling up to the fields outside the gated community, we see all the hordes gathered around the area and decide to take them out too. First with a silent pistol, then with our trusty spears. And after a long morning fighting, all the fields are clear. And we head back to where we were fighting the other day and decide just to use a gun this time, as we found enough 9 ammo at base, and this way we can save some energy. So cutting them around and slowly picking them off. And as night falls, the hordes are dead. But we can't be bothered to run all the way home, so we take the risky chance of breaking into the motel and staying here for the night. And waking up on day 57, with surprisingly no Zeds around, we go back to fighting, trying to take out as many as we can, kiting them around again and shooting them with our pistol. This time, we run straight into two more hordes. I end up trying to lose the hordes in the woods. 
and it worked, we ended up bumping into more zombies on the way back. Man, what is this population? Do we clear the ones following, using up what's left of our ammo, and finally being able to rest, and try to find a scrap of fuel from some of these cars around us, so we can try and make a Molotov, take out some more of them easily. And we're in luck. We'll make a Molotov and throw out the first orb we see. Fighting off any others we see with melee, and again, too many to handle, causing us to run. But in a split second decision, we think screw it. Why not run and try grab our car from the other day? And with hordes all around, we jump in, hoping it will start, and in the nick of time, it does. And we're out of here. We drive straight home and get some sleep. Take us into day 58. And with our plan on heading out again, this time taking another route. We're going to try clear some more of the town so we can get to the school. So we get ready, grabbing two swords and two sour bags and the trusty Molotov. Then we head out and park the car near the fire station and start to fight off the hordes in the area and decide it's time to start the fires again and almost instantly burn down the fire station as well. But then have a bright idea. Why not use a shotgun to lure more of the zombies over to the area so we can burn more at once. We're looping around the fields to catch as many light as we can. We head to the back of the fire station so we can pin them all in this fenced off area. And we quickly hop the fence, going into the housing area, where we spend the next few hours clearing the zombies out of the houses. And luckily, we find three more bottles to make some more Molotovs. So we take a look back over at the fire station, and all the Zeds have burned away. So we hop back over to try and go grab some fuel from the car. And after a little bit of resistance from the leftover zombies, we eventually sneak over to the car and make a few more Molotovs. And instantly put one to use, as the big hordes formed over in the fields again. And briskly hopping back over to the housing area, we go settle into one of the houses we cleared up and sleep for the night. And waking up on day 59, we head straight out to the front of the houses, finding another horde down the street. So Molotov away and shotgun out. We spend the whole day shooting the bigger groups of the shotgun and fighting the smaller ones we've made. Then finally, one Molotov throw for a bigger hole. Then, losing them so we can save ammo and just let them burn. Then when the fighting calms down and we're super tired, we return to another house for the night, waking up on day 60 and taking another walk down the road, finding more Zeds so we take them out of our trusty spear. finally have a chance to loot. Well, the buildings that haven't caught on fire anyway. Until I spot another huge horde in the gardens. So throw another molly and loop away just to let them burn. And they're where we lost the car the other day. And of course, getting into another fight with a horde hiding in the trees. They easily dispatch them. Then start heading down towards the school and looting some of the houses and the garages on the way. And storing all the goodies we found in a car so we can grab them later. Except from the garden fork, of course. That's coming with us. And again, we bump into another large horde. And we think it's best just to burn them. But this time looping around, we just walk straight into another hall. And finally when the coast is clear, we make a run for the school. And as we arrive, we see the windows are boarded up. Meaning the NPCs have either based here, or there's some good loot inside. And here in a house alarm going off nearby, but it doesn't seem like we need to worry about it right now. But we head in, clearing the ones inside, beginning to loot the offices. We see a zombie come through the front door, and there might be more. So we sprint out into the hallway, and they just keep coming. And with the Zed starting to come from behind as well, we make a run through the school, until we notice something. Doors on the other side are barred. We're trapped. And without hesitation, we have to shoot our way out. We got a roll. With a chance, we go for the door. Whoa! What is going on here? Oh my god, we got out of there at the perfect time. Jesus Christ. We see an opportunity to clear the hall. A high fenced area at the back of the school. We can run in, set them all ablaze, and jump the fence. Just like we have at the fire station. But after I throw the Molotov, I turn to see the undead crowding at the fences. We're in trouble, but we do what we can, kite them around and try and make a gap for escape. And with the hordes growing, we make a fatal error. Can I jump on the roof? Oh wait, I didn't even... Oh. We try to hop up onto the roof with low endurance. Bandage, bandage, ah. Oh. And somehow, the bleeding slows, finally giving us a chance to bandage our neck. And 
finally, we see a chance to hop over the fence. Come on, get over. But after a few attempts, we can't make it over. And now we're too tired to even run. And the fiery horde is gaining on us. All we can do is try out maneuver them, but with one last wrong turn, we're cornered. And a few more desperate attempts to hop the fence. Rick's gone. But Rick's loud shotgun blasts weren't only heard by the undead. On the outskirts of town, on the populated highways, a nomad survivor overhears Rick's final moment. And at its late, he sleeps in a nearby car with the goal for tomorrow to investigate the noise. But waking up on day 61, the nomad survivor, Daryl Slickson, yeah, he's not based off anyone, jumps on his bike, makes his way to Rosewood, dodging a few hordes on the highway, and eventually arriving at Rosewood, and instantly crashing. That didn't happen, but it doesn't take long for Daryl to spot tons of dead zeds and scorch marks across the whole town. And that's perfect, because Daryl was out on the road looking for an old friend. So he heads further into town, looking for the source of the gunshots, and finds a hell of a lot more Zeds. And after trying to fight a few, a pretty substantial horde is formed. And as Daryl's been on the road for a while, his skills aren't really up to scratch. So he gives him the slip and instantly runs into more. So he decides to back off for a minute, loot at a local house, as he hasn't got much supplies. But time to head out again and look around. And finally taking on a few Zeds. Until he sees a bigger horde and decides to use a Molotov, like an old friend taught him. And when the Zeds are finally dealt with, he makes his way over to this huge burning building, which seems like a school. But on arrival, the hordes start converging, and after killing countless of them, we're getting worn out. So we back off and find refuge in a local house, which has hundreds of bodies out back. Whoever was here, they were busy. But after a quick wash, we get some sleep, waking up early on day 62. He decides to venture out, and with his bike across town, looking for another vehicle, and stumbling into a pretty big horde at the fire station. And he's fed up of running. But after the dust has settled, we see a car here, with loads of supplies in the trunk. So we hop in to quickly hotwire it, and find a map with a lot of annotations, talks to the school which we found in flames, and a lot of really cool events. Damn, they must be at least worth a sub. But most of all, a mark on the map for a base, in a prison nearby. So Daryl hot wires the car, and sets off, pulling up out front, and hopping through by the front windows, and begins to explore, and finally comes across a more secure area. And with a quick look around, no one's here. But Daryl's cert, this base belonged to his friend, Rick Rungs. With all the bodies around town, and with the map, it must be here. But Daryl settles in, taking stock of all the loot Rick's acquired, and even throws on some new gear, then decides to get to work. He can see Rick's been trying to work on some cars, but knows Rick didn't have a clue. So we head out to the front of the prison to start sorting through some of the cars, hot wiring them all, moving them inside, and taking this nice bike straight back to the garage. But now that's done, we head back in and start going through Rick's book collection, reading for everything we can until it gets late and we need to get some sleep where we wake up on day 63 and continue on our reading till all the books are done. Then spend the rest of the day organizing around the base, doing a little exercise and getting an early night, waking up early on day 64. And with no sign of Rick returning, Daryl knows something's up. Rick's either dead or he's in trouble. So we head back into town on our new bike and the hordes are everywhere. So we pull up near the police station to take some of them out. And after a lot of fighting, the area is looking a lot more empty. So we try and hotwire two cars outside the burnt down courthouse. Getting one done, but tracking some more Zeds. So after a long and annoying fight, we can finally hotwire the second car. Then decide to take a look near the gated community just to see how many Zeds are around. And there's a lot. So we dump the car, quickly beeping the horn, just to make sure the horns crowd up together so we can deal with them later. And a swift getaway back to the police station where we again start hot wiring the cars in the car park, start thinking up a plan to use a campfire to set all the Zeds ablaze. And after a day of hot wiring, we go to sleep and wire the cars in the car park. 
and waking up on day 65 and straight away try to put our campfire plan into action. And of course, when I'm trying to set up, Zed won't leave me alone. So we end up running around eventually having to fight the ones following. But we do find a better place to put the fire. And after taking out the local Zeds, we fuel the fire and go and grab our secret weapon the trusty police cruiser, and park it next to the fire, light it up, and set off the siren, hopefully bringing all the Zeds over. And as we're escaping, yep, yeah, it's definitely working. Whoa, look at all of them. Then when we finally get away, we still have to fight a couple hordes that are next to the police station, and finally can dry off and catch our breath in a car. But of course we have to go take a peek, see how the plan's doing. And yeah, this definitely worked, but we aren't done yet. Time to use a shotgun we just found, and get the fire to spread a little. when it seems like we've well and truly kicked the hornet's nest, we bounce and hop into one of our hot-wired cars and escape back to the prison, where we settle down for the night and wake up on day 66. We need to get back to work, so we grab a shotgun and a hell of a lot of shells and head back to town. And it begins. And after a whole day of fighting in the rain, we try to set another fire and lure over the last of the Zeds. Their long trip through the woods, back to base. And we're completely soaked, so for some reason we strip off and go to bed just to wake up on day 67 with a stinking cold. But after taking every pill known to man and throwing on some clothes, somehow we're fine. So we head back out and straight back to waging war on Rosewood. Begin to move some of the vehicles to block some of the entrance to the gator community so maybe we can finally have a little bit of security around here. And when the night falls, we jump into one of the local houses. Oh god, that scared me. And get some sleep. Wake it up on day 68. And the first thing is to finally loot some of these houses, which has tons of useful loot, including one of the books Rick was desperately looking for. But still, no generator book. And finally decide it's about time to finally block off the rest of the road by moving a couple of the bins between the cars. I'm sure that'll hold them. Then more Zeds have gathered at the other side, so back to the shotgun, and time to block off the other entrance too. But this time with a bunch of random furniture. Then as it's dark, we go back into other houses, and do some carpentry leveling, before getting a good night's sleep, waking up on day 69, then head out with a goal of trying to retrieve our bike from a week ago. And looting up some of the houses and the garages on the way. But it doesn't take long to start getting into some big fights as well. But in the intervals, we do find some useful loot. But eventually making it down to the school, finding a pretty sick ATV, maybe we'll take that later. But before we can search further, we start getting too much attention. We grab our bike and book it back to the gated community, where the noise of our bike brings in the hall. And with our last few shells, we take out as many as we can. Then have to take out a few crawling under the cars. Yeah, this is a little bit of an oversight. But after killing as many as we can, I slip away into one of the houses and try and sleep, hope I'm not going to be welcomed by a horde on day 70. And no horde, but there's definitely plenty at the back entrance. So a little melee to clear them out. Then decide it's time to head out and clear out some more of the area. But I might have paused my recording. I know, I was disappointed too. Oh, why? <laughs> But we spent the day killing Zeds, and now we're leveling our carpentry skill again, destroying some of the garden fences. And just as we're about to call it a night, we take out a few intruders and notice this. Where the hell have they all come from? But it's too late to deal with that, so we go to the other end and sleep in one of the houses, waking up on day 71, where we decide we're just going to ignore what we saw last night and try and build another wall across one of the back rows behind the shops, with the idea of building up wall frames and blocking the other side with a car. God knows if this will work. And we see the chance to swap out our car for a better one, but as soon as we put the car against the wall, a huge horde appears. What on earth? Whilst running and trying to take them out, more and more come out of the woodwork, causing us to run, but we loop around to the police station again, where we clear out any hordes following. 
and begin to build a wall there too, connecting up the fire station and the police station. With every wall we build, more Zeds come. So after a day full of building and clearing, we take a risky sleep in the back of a police cruiser. Waking up on day 72, not feeling too good. So decide to take one of the vans from the police car park and do a quick supply run back to base. Spend the rest of the day resting up and stocking up for tomorrow. Then get a good night's sleep, ready for day 73, where we take a new gun and a few Molotovs back to town. See if we can clear the area again. And when we've done all we can, we head back to the police station and try to finish off our long wall by cutting down some trees and building some more of the wall frames. Then try to get back to the gated community for a good night's sleep, but end up having to sleep in a van as there's way too many Zeds around. We wake up on day 74 to some worrying noises. And after a tense moment, we get away and try and put down the horde, but there's too many. So we drive across to the gated community and there's tons there too. So in defeat, we try and go home. But after a few too many run over zombies, the van dies on me. I have to make the run home, leaving all the loot in the van. And when we're back at base, we start to notice a slow decline in the weapons that Daryl's been using. So we try and train him up with a trusty spear, gathering some of the wood around the prison and making a few spears. Then making our way out to the back fences and killing as many as we can before the spears break. Which annoyingly, isn't that many. And we call it a night after a pretty frustrating day. But waking up on day 75, with motivation to go back to Rosewood and clear it out, we grab a sword and a couple axes, just to instantly get stuck by a horde at the entrance of the prison. And after dealing with them, even more Zeds by the car park. And at this point, I'm already sidetracked, so why not carry on? We decide to go and try and loot where the watchtowers, just in case there's anything useful in there. And after a little battling, we get in and there's some ammo, so definitely worth a look. So we head back to base, killing a few strays as we go, and spend the remainder of the day thinking about what the hell we're going to do about the hordes gathering outside the fences. As sooner or later, they're just going to walk around and come straight through the entrance. But we get an early night and we sleep on it. Waking up on day 76, to the horde situation getting worse. And after an airdrop, which will only bring more, but we roughly loot the airdrop, but end up dumping a lot of it to the huge hordes outside the fences. At this point, you can really tell I'm starting to lose it. If this group gets in, we're screwed. But after a little think, we have a plan. We need a fire, of course. But the only bottles we have left are in our old truck in town. A quick trip and a car swap and the hordes around the fences are getting crazy. We make our mollies and grab a police cruiser. Then go out to grab a little bit of wood so we can make a campfire. You know where this is going. Then drive the car behind the horde in the tree line. Set up the campfire, but before we have time to light it, the horde is on us. We have time to throw a couple mollies, then make a dash back to base and get some sleep, hoping the Molotovs do some work. I wake up on day 77, ready to try again. And of course, there's a horde just stood next to the car. So I throw my last Molotov to lure them away and get to the car. And I can't find the campfire and the car's all out of fuel. And the horde I just set ablaze is coming straight for me. But I think screw it. We've got to spread the fire somehow. So we run straight towards the fences. And just as I think it can't get any worse, their drop gets dropped right next to us, bringing in all the Zeds from the woods. Oh my God, this is mayhem. And somehow, after a very stressful run, we make it all the way around the prison, and back into the safety of the fences, and try and shout to get all the Zeds to bunch up against the fences, so they can all burn. Let's just hope the fences can't burn down. But after hours, we've set tons of light, but there's still hundreds out there. And with Daryl's struggles of the last week, we have to really put a plan in action. We need weapons and ammo, as the ammo supply has definitely taken a hit recently. We need some tools and supplies, and finally, a sustainable food and water source. But these plans can wait. As Daryl's pretty tired from burning the undead. We chill for the rest of the day, then call it a night. Wake it up on day 78, and start off by fixing a few of the most useful weapons. The mighty axe. And spend the start of the day putting the axe to work. Looting around the prison, just in case you missed anything, and killing a few Zeds as we go. And finding a locker room that I've never seen before. I never knew there was a locker room there. And realizing there was a better bag in the armory this whole time. Then heading over to the kitchens, in hopes there would be a sack there so we could move the dirt around to make a farm. But no luck. But somehow, we didn't notice there was a little patch of grass outside our base. So the farming begins. First digging it up, and then planting some broccoli and tomatoes. Then spending forever watering all the plants, which uses all our water outside. We definitely need to make some more rain collectors. And it's getting late, so we head to bed. Waking up on day 79. And when the sun comes up, we decide to head out. As the plan for today is to acquire some of these much needed items. 
the welding mask. So we can begin to make some scrap weapons to last, and make some stronger fortifications. And the only mask we know of is the one Rick left in his lost car. So we head out on one of our more expendable cars, and before long, we start finding ourselves in some trouble. We manage to drive through a few hordes, but next to the old construction yard, there's just too many. And after praying for a chance to hop out of the car and run, we see our chance, and make our run for the woods, and leave in our car. I mean, I did say it's expendable, but after a little walk through the woods, we finally come to an opening. But of course, there's hordes everywhere. And after making it through to a less infested area, we take out the ones following and take a little break, loot a local barn and a farmhouse, and find some more food. But decide to continue on, killing a few zeds in the area, and finally seeing the car in the distance. But we're getting tired, and there's plenty of zombies around the car. So we head back to the farmhouse and relax for the night and get some sleep. Wake up on day 80, then head straight out to reclaim Rick's truck. And after killing all the Zeds around it, including Tijilla from Tarkov, who of course has a welding mask, we get to the truck, fuel it up, and now we have two welding masks. And just as we're setting off to head home, my game crashes. And when I reload, the day's restarted. Okay, day 80 again. But we continue our drive, looping around the fields and finding the highway. Weirdly empty. So we decide to push our luck and loot some of the local farmhouses. I mean, we do have the time now. So we park up the car and head in on foot. Taking out all the Zeds in the area. And finally looting the first house, which has nothing special. We start to make our way to the second house, using the fences to our advantage. But when another wave of the undead appears, we start to get worn out. And of course, with the time reset earlier, we're getting tired already. And the fights are getting a little out of hand. And get so tired, we can't even run. And the panic's starting to set in. But we make a break for the car, and the passenger seat is occupied. What? Now I'm screwed. But make a desperate attempt to loop back to the house we slept in the night before, across the fields, and luckily, only one has followed us. So we awkwardly take them out, and make our way to the house, by the skin of our teeth. Head straight upstairs to sleep, but... It crashes again, and when I reload, it's day 80 at 4 in the morning again. But screw it, we sleep, but wake up at 4 in the afternoon, and it's still day 80. But head straight back out, killing as we go, until we finally reach the car. Empty the passenger seat of the sweets that Rick left, and head back to loot the last house. Killing all the Zeds outside, and looting the whole house. Finding mainly food, so really not worth the hassle. But had taken a few sleeping tablets, so we could finally end day 80. And thank god, wake up on day 81, at a normal time. And I decide it's about time to head back to base. And for some reason, decide to stop at Rick's old abandoned van to see what's inside. And start a huge conga line. But it's all good, we find a gap and manage to quickly get away in the car. And try and take the old route back to the base across the farmlands, but completely underestimate the hordes. And after pushing through a couple of them, it's time to dump the car, rather than risk getting surrounded. And another sketchy run through the undead follows, we make it back to base in one piece, and witness the crazy numbers of zeds around the fence again. But enough of the undead, we finally got the tools we needed. So we get to it, disassembling the inside fences, just to quickly get sidetracked by a small horde. But when they're all dealt with, back to it, and finally leveling up to level 2. And as darkness rolls in, we call it a night, with finally a little bit of progress. And on day 82, we get straight back to it, until we realise we haven't read the next metalworking book. But now that's done, we go out into the prison again, taking down a few cabinets, and finding the perfect fence to level through. And we do exactly that, until a very big oversight appears. Our propane torch has ran out of fuel, and even though we got another one back at base, it's just a matter of time before we run out completely. So we run back to base, killing a few intruders as we go, and gathering all our metal supplies. And then get what water's left in the taps, to water our farm. And we call it a night, with a propane problem being our main concern for tomorrow. We wake up on day 83 to a jet flying over, stirring up the zombies a little. And spend the day thinking of where there might be a propane tank. And clearing out the prison as it's getting a bit out of hand again. And yeah, I'm really cutting this down. I don't want you guys getting bored now. Then get some sleep, taking us into day 84. And think we found our solution to the propane problem. I think there is a big propane tank in the fire station. So head out of the base, killing even more Zeds, and finally taking the van into town. But can't make it far, with the hordes blocking all the roads. So we stop on the outskirts, and make our way in. And gather a little bit too much attention at the police station. After trailing the hordes around, picking off as many as we can, we're getting tired. So decide to quickly check if the propane tank is actually there, and thank god, it is. Just now to deal with the hordes. And after a quick run around, and a tactical fence hop, we can finally rest. Now time to get that tank. Killing the zeds around the garage, then looting the area just in case we missed anything. But 
no way of transporting the tank without a vehicle. And there's no way I'm walking this all the way back to base. So we go out to grab a vehicle and the hordes are everywhere. But we end up making a risky play. I'm pretty sure the police truck had four Molotovs in it. So we go and grab one of those. Yoink. So we can burn the bastards. So we duke it across the fields, then light them up. Then start trailing them back to town, popping the fences into the police station. But being too focused on the plan, I hadn't really noticed that Daryl's knackered. And after a few awkward Zed kills, we can't even run. So the only option, we jump onto the roof. When we can. And finally up, but now it's not safe enough to sleep. So we wait around until it's officially day 85. But finally get some sleep in the early hours, just to wake up to flames almost bringing our journey to an early end. But the whole day is spent trying to sleep on top of the roof and regain our strength for the inevitable fight. Then when it's 11 at night, we get back to it. We hop down and begin to fight our way into day 86. And after a long fight, we are tired and exhausted again. And with more Zeds on the way, we hop onto the roof to get some rest. And get some sleep, waking up into the afternoon. And we start the fight again. But with the Zed population not stopping and starving on the horizon, we had to call it quits and run back to base, where we get some food and get a proper night's sleep. Waking up on day 87 and being welcomed by the undead at our door, we head up to the entrance to the prison, clearing our way and using some metal sheets to barricade the windows and hopping outside to try and clear them out. And there's quite a lot, so this goes on for almost the whole day until we decide to try and fight our way to the watchtowers with the hope there might be some much needed ammo inside. With the bodies piling up, the Zeds don't stop coming. And by 3 in the morning, on day 88, we have to call it a night. Then go straight back to it, fighting all day into the night again. Taking multiple breaks and fighting into day 89. And the fighting doesn't stop until the morning. And we have to pull back as Daryl is shattered again. So we sleep and wake up at 8 in the evening. But no time to waste. And thank God, it actually seems like we made a dent in the population. We fight a few more and finally get into the tower. And all our hard work was worth it. Oh, yes. Okay. A case of shotgun ammo. We walk back to base, take a sleeping tablet, and get a normal night's sleep, waking up on day 90, where we spend the morning preparing, and then to head out with a fully loaded shotgun on our back, and run straight over to the abandoned police truck, and grab the leftover mollies, and make a run towards town, luring as many zombies as we can, and I'm sure you know what happens next. And eventually leading them all to the police station, where we can fit out their numbers. But as the darkness creeps in, we decide to try quiet it down a little bit, fighting some with melee, then sneaking over to the fire station, which doesn't go to plan. But we hop the fence, looping back around, and snatch the propane tank. Then try to run back to the police station to use where the cars and the car park as an escape. But of course, we are overrun by the undead. And after trying to fight them off, give up, grab the propane tank, and luckily find our old van on the outskirts of town. So a risky jump in, and a rush home. But arriving back home, it seems like the Zeds have made it into the base. So quickly grab some more ammo and run out to the yard to clear them out. And by the time it's done, it's 7 in the morning. No better time to get some sleep. We'll wake up in the evening and have to kill some more Zeds that have snuck in. Then we check on our crops. Then have a little wash in the rain and take some sleeping pills so we can sleep normally. We'll wake up on day 92 where we finally put our new propane tank to work, taking down the inner fencing, then go to the prison to try and get some more metal parts for construction later. Then when it's getting late, head back to base and build ourselves a metal workbench, dumping the rest of our metal supplies on the floor, killing a final intruder, then straight to bed, waking up on day 93, moving our workbench to a better spot, then struggling to even use it, then having a bit of a panic, thinking we can't use it because we have a fancy welder mask, not the original one and go on a wild goose chase looking in our old police truck for the old world of mask. Which, I say is, not in there, but it definitely is. But anyways, we run all the way back to base, looking in every crate for it, and miraculously, find one in the van, which I can't even remember where it came from. Just to find out, we still can't do anything with a workbench, but we can now do metalworking builds. So I guess I was sort of right, but spend the rest of the night doing absolutely nothing and getting some much needed sleep, waking up on day 94. We spend the start of the day taking out some small hordes, then spend the remainder of the day looking around the prison for furniture to deconstruct, finding a few benches, killing a few more Zeds, then as it's getting dark, finding the old locker room, perfect for leveling up our metalwork. But then head back to base and get some sleep, take us to day 95, where we begin to head out, then realise we haven't even read the next volume of the metalworking. 
And some reason, we have volume four, but no volume three. So quickly to the prison library, which is really just a pile of books at this point, where we finally find volume three. So back to base and a quick read on our comfy armchair. Wait, comfy armchair? Where's that come from? Oh well, I must have got to show that. And with our XP boosts, we head out, but instantly get sidetracked with more Zeds wandering down the halls. So we take them out, finding another room to disassemble, and turn our focus to the small building under the armory, as I'm pretty sure this is where all the Zeds are getting in. So we kill the Zeds, then remember the locker room we looted recently, and disassemble that too, and with the materials, decide it's best to block off the hallway back to the prison starting with warframes, then disassembling the common room until it's dark, but before we head home, some reason decide to take on a whole horde in the dark, which leads all the way back to base, where we get some sleep, waking up on day 96, and going straight back out, taking apart anything we find, then coming up with a plan for the entrance of the prison. We're going to barricade every window with metal sheets, and use filing cabinets to block the outsides of the windows. Hopefully, that makes it super strong. Start with dismantling everything in the area, and clearing out all the Zeds, then start sorting the entrance windows, then build in some safety doors. Then finish blocking off all the windows and blocking off one of the doors for good measure. Then finally back home for a good night's sleep, waking up on day 97. Then straight back to the entrance, killing tons of Zeds again. Then finally blocking off that prison hallway with windowed walls, barricading them with metal and a filing cabinet in front. And as we aren't tired yet, I think why not tackle our biggest challenge, blocking off the road around the inner fence so the Zeds can't just wander in. And the plan's the same as the hallway. Wooden walls and windows, barricaded with metal. And as we have a ton of filing cabinets, add them for extra protection. So we fill the car with the supplies and head out. Having to fight a few Zeds on arrival, then putting down some warframes and making two of them into windows. But it's got pretty late, so we head back and call it a night. Waking up on day 98, where we head out to the front with more wooden planks and end up fighting a huge horde. But then finally, we can go and finish off some of the walls, making all the ones from last night into windows and barricading them all. Gathering some more wood and putting them in the van, and some more metal plates as well. Then get some sleep, ready to finish the wall tomorrow, and waking up on day 99, going straight back to the building, taking the van to the wall, and building more walls with windows, and barricading them, and taking the van to the front of the prison to grab the filing cabinets, which we dump in the van and take back to the wall. And as we put them down, we might have found a small bug. The final filing cabinet seems to cause all the zombies to group together in one spot, which makes it perfect to use a spear on, which I do until my spear breaks. But anyways, after realizing the van won't fit through the gap I left, I just block that off with more walls and a couple cabinets, completing my wall. And just a disclaimer, I have no idea if this is actually effective. But we spend the rest of the evening back at base, making a few more rain collectors for the farm, then prepping for our final day, then getting one more sleep, waking up on day 100. So, we've come to the end, and perfectly achieved our goals. Found more ammo for our weapons, got the tools we needed, and achieved a sustainable food and water source. And now, it's time for a celebration. We got tons of mollies, and tons of ammo. So time to get some payback. We run outside, almost shitting our pants, but the carnage begins. Blasting through our 556 ammo, and blowing away groups of Zeds with a shotgun. Having the time of our lives, then, crash. Well, what a hilarious way to end the challenge. Thank you so much for all the love on this series, expect more series just like it. And if you enjoy Rick and Daryl's journey, leave a comment and a like for the album, and subscribe for more. And who knows, maybe Daryl will come back.